Hey guys, I'm Nitij and in this video, I will tell you almost everything you need to know about using environment variables in your React application. So let's get started. The environment variables in React are used to store configuration settings and sensitive information like API keys outside of your application code. They help in maintaining the security and flexibility of your application especially when you are working with different environments like for example development, testing, production and so on and so forth. So the first thing that we need to know is how to create an environment variable in our React application. And the environment variables can be stored in a file named as .env so that React will be able to um, you know, read them and pick them up automatically when the application is built and run. And the format in which we have to write the names of our environment variables is this one prefix them with react underscore app let me just zoom in some more so react underscore app and then you have to provide your um, variable name so for example if you want to add an environment variable for a public api key then you can do it like this react app api key so as i said earlier react underscore app underscore is a required prefix for custom environment variables in create react app this prefix ensures your app's security by exposing only what is necessary now how do we access these environment variables we can access these environment variables by simply writing their name so let me just add a use effect over here where we can do something when the component mounts for the first time and then over here i can simply write console.log and then the name of our environment variable by using process.env. the name which is this one um, let's also add a dummy value like you know abc123 etc for the key and this is how we can access the environment variables. Now, as I told you earlier, we can use different environment variables for different environments. And for that, we can create different types of .env files. So for instance, right now it's just .env, which is common for every other environment. Now we can create .env for the dev environment, which can be called as development. We can create another env file for let's say production so dot env dot production and so on now let's talk about security considerations while creating these environment variables avoid storing sensitive data like api keys which are meant to be hidden directly in the environment files if the code base is in a public repository or if you are going to have the user download your website code from a hosting environment because the environment variables are embedded into the build and will be visible to anyone who is inspecting your apps files now there are some limitations and considerations so these variables are static and cannot be changed once the application is built for server-side code or more secure handling of sensitive variables consider using a backend server or a serverless function now let's talk about some advanced usage and best practices. Number one is default values. You can set default values for your environment variable directly in your code. For example, over here, if this React App API key environment variable is not available, then we can use a default value other than that. So XYZ678, etc. This will make sure that we have a fallback when the default configuration is not available. Number two is environment variables in CI/CD pipelines can be used. So we can set them in our CI/CD configuration. This allows different settings for different deployment stages like staging or production without changing the code. This can also help you in making sure to keep sensitive information secure in your CI/CD environment. Number third is version control and .env files. So exclude your .env files from version control using .gitignore. This practice is crucial for security 
particularly for private API keys and passwords. But if you still want to provide an example of how the .env file should look like, then you can create another file with the name .env.example. This will simply contain the dummy values of all the environment variables which can be set. When environment variables don't seem to be working, ensure you restart the development server after making changes to .env files. Be aware of the difference between server-side environment variables and those embedded in the client-side React application because server-side variables are not accessible from client-side unless explicitly sent from the server to the client. Remember, anything accessible on the client-side, including environment variables, can be seen by users. So never store truly sensitive data like database passwords in client-side code. Now let's talk about some other best practices. You can structure your environment configuration logically based on what needs to be there. So for example, you can you know club your API keys together like key one, key two, key three, and so on. And maybe you want to use some URLs. So for that, you can club them together as well. So URL one equals to, you know, some value and URL two, URL three and so on. I mean, you get the idea, right? You can structure your environment variables so that it is easier to manage and understand your configuration. Next is documentation. So document your environment variables and their purposes, especially in a shared or team environment. Include instructions in your project's readme file, like this one, readme.md, or any other documentation on how to set up the environment variables for new developers or deployments. Also, it is a good idea to validate your environment variables before using them. For example, if you are using the environment variable for an email, then make sure that this is indeed a valid email so you will need to test or validate the value first before using it and falling back to a default value if the format is not correct you can also use the environment variables for feature flags so for example if you want to enable or disable the features based on environment variables then you can do that as well so feature one enabled something like that true or false so these feature flags can be used to enable or disable features in different environments before rolling them out in production. Next one is consistency across different environments. So ensure that your environment variables are consistent across all environments. If the variables are meant to be there, then they should exist in all environments. For example, development, staging, production, etc. even if they have different values. This can prevent runtime errors due to missing variables. Also avoid hard coding fallbacks for environment variables in production. So fallbacks and default values are helpful, but you have to be cautious about hard coding them in production because this can lead to unexpected behavior. If any of the environment variable is accidentally unset, then the code will start to revert back to the fallback value. And then it can take a while for developers to figure out and debug what is wrong with the code, why a different value is being picked up for some kind of configuration. So guys, that was everything about environment variables in this video. You have learned how to create them, set them up, use them, and then some best practices on how to manage them effectively in your project. Let me know if you have any questions about them by using the comments area. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel and also liking this video. I am Nitij and I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and happy coding.